everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on our Facebook live stream today. We are so excited to be here with you today. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are joining you from the traditional and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Since we've got folks tuning in from all over the place, we encourage you to find out the story behind the land that you're on right now. Now we are here at Science World in Vancouver, British Columbia, and we are going to put on a pretty cool show for you today, uh, but I'm not here all by myself. Uh, we do have some other folks uh, putting on that show for you today, um, but as you know, if you've been under the dome before, you know that safety is one of our top priorities. So we do make sure that all of the folks who are participating today are far away from the stage, they're well outside of the danger zone, and far apart from each other. Uh, operating our camera, we've got Jen here, and Jen can actually zoom in and zoom out uh, so that you can see what's going on up close on stage without Jen having to come any closer towards me. We also have Ashley over here on my other side. Ashley's going to be monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions, if you want to answer any of the questions that I'm putting out to you, or if you just have a funny joke, feel free to add that into the chat. We love hearing what you have to say. There's also that handy dandy react button. If you see something like you like, go ahead and click that react button so that we know which parts you like of the show. Uh, now, today's show is all about sound, and you're going to be listening to these sounds from your homes. We've also got our science facilitators watching from their homes. Uh, so at certain points throughout the show, we're going to pass it off to our friends Brian and Cindy and see what they're getting up to as roommates in their homes. To start us off, we need to know that sound is about three things, all right? So, with these three things that sound is all about, I want to test you, see if you can guess what one of these th three things might be. As I tell you thing number one and thing number two, if you can guess what thing number three is, type that into the chat and we'll see if you're right. So, to start us off, thing number one is vibration. Right, so we've got vibration as thing number one. Anybody guess what thing number three is yet? I'll give you thing number two. Thing number two is vibration. All right, so we've got vibration as thing number one, vibration as thing number two, and uh, Ashley, has anybody been able to guess what thing number three might be? Oh, everybody wants to say hi. Well, hello, everyone. That's awesome. Maybe along with thing number three, you can also type in your favorite animal sound, and maybe we can guess what that animal is if you type out that sound there. Vibration. Vibration. Awesome. People did guess what thing number three was. It is, in fact, vibration. All right, it might seem kind of silly that we've got vibration three times, uh, but I'll show you why with a couple of the materials that I have right here. So first off, that first vibration is actually coming from the object that's making the sound vibrating itself. So you can see we have a tuning fork right here, and if I hit this tuning fork off, say, my shoe, woo, requires a little bit of balance, we've got a little bit of sound. All right, so I'll hit it a little bit harder this time, more balance required. And you can see we've got a little bit of sound there. So that object vibrating is our first vibration. Our second vibration is when that sound travels. So in this instance, we've got sound traveling through the air. So I want you all at home to stick your arms out like this. All right, and I want you to give us a nice wave. So these are the vibrations traveling through the air. They might scoot across towards you, and then they're going to reach our third vibration. This vibration is actually happening inside of our ear. So when those sound waves travel through the air and reach our ear, that causes little tiny parts inside of our ear to vibrate and help us detect the sound. So the scientific 
name for the part of the ear that vibrates like that is actually called the tympanic membrane. Right? Tympanic membrane. Now I'm wondering if anybody might be able to guess what the tympanic membrane is called in just day-to-day -day terms. This device might help you out there. So if you, if you know what the tympanic membrane is called in day-to-day -day terms, maybe you can type that out into the chat and we can see if you're right. While we're waiting on those responses, Ashley, did we have anybody type in their favorite animal sound by any chance? Okay, I'm gonna guess that's the sound of a. Uh, I'm gonna guess that's the sound of a walrus. Does a walrus say "hubba bubba bubba bubba"? Brian, let us know if that's the animal that you were talking about. <laughs> All right, and any guesses for what the tympanic membrane might be? Jessica, Sam, and Clara have said the eardrum. You are absolutely correct. It is the eardrum. Very well done. So we've got those vibrations, those three sets of vibrations. We're going to take a little closer look at those vibrations using a very technical piece of equipment that we have right over here. This is what we call a ping pong ball attached to a shoelace. So we have our ping pong ball attached to a shoelace. It's got a little face on it. How cute is that? Uh, and it's hanging right here. We also have, once again, our tuning fork. So if we put our tuning fork right up next to our ping pong ball, we'll see what happens and it's nothing. Nothing's happening, but okay. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to get this tuning fork vibrating so that it's going to make that sound and then see what happens to our ping pong ball here. So we'll get it vibrating. You can hear that sound and oh, there it goes. So those vibrations are passing through to the ping pong ball. We'll try it one more time. Woo! causing that ping pong ball to have just the time of its life bouncing around there. Awesome, seeing those vibrations in real life. We can also make those vibrations travel through something else. I forgot that I put it right here for easy access. We have some water right here. Okay, so we've got water and we have our vibrating tuning fork. Now, with our water in our vibrating tuning fork, we're going to place this inside of the water and see what happens. Maybe put down in the chat if, uh, if you have any predictions or guesses what might happen when you put a vibrating tuning fork inside of some water. All right, so let's get this tuning fork vibrating once again. And there it goes. Ready and... Oh, that cut my face a little bit wet. Can you see the moisture there? Oh, that water actually vibrated there. We'll try it one more time. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it splashed right up in my face. All right, so those vibrations are actually traveling through the water, just like they traveled through the air. Now we do have a fun experiment that you can actually try out at home to see how these vibrations can travel. Uh, now we're going to pass it off to our friends Brian and Cindy and see what they have in store for us as they try some sound experiments. Let's see it. Hey folks, it's Brian and Cindy from Science World and we've got a really cool demonstration that you can try at home with just a few simple items. We've got two cups, we've got a bunch of string, you'll see why in a moment, and we've got two paper clips. If you poke a hole in the bottom of your cup and then fish your line through and just tie it off with a paper clip that will keep it in place and it allows you to throw it down to someone that can help you with the demonstration. So I'm going to throw a cup down to Cindy. I'm going to hold on to the other one and we're going to demonstrate how sound is vibrations but those vibrations don't always have to travel through the air. Now they will travel through the air a little bit in this demonstration but there's also going to be some vibrations that happen in Cindy's cup and those vibrations are going to travel through the string and they're actually going to 
gonna end up in my cup over here. Now I can obviously put my cup up against my ear, but I've got a microphone here so then you can hear the results at home. I'm gonna put the microphone beside the cup so it's kinda as if Cindy was just talking into a cup and I didn't have anything special going on, so let's try that. And then I'm gonna put the microphone inside of here, inside our cup telephone. Can you hear me? Woo. If you guys are gonna try this at home, uh, feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag show us your science so we can see all the cool things that you're doing at home. Have a great day. That was pretty awesome. I might just get rid of my cell phone and go with two, uh, two cups from here on out. Uh, that was pretty great, those vibrations actually traveling through the string itself. So that's them traveling through a solid. Super neat. So we uh, are actually going to move on to another element of sound. And before I introduce that, I want to show you this item here. This is actually the most ancient piece of science equipment that we have here at Science World. Uh, it's, a, it's a strange device. It's got some ridges on it right here. And while I'm explaining the next feature of sound, what I want you to do is in the chat, I want you to type out how you think we should use this device here to make a sound. Any answers are welcome. So go ahead and type that into the chat. Now what we're gonna look at here is we're actually gonna look at how we can change sound. So we know that sound is vibrations and that sound travels in those waves. Now we can change sound by changing the pitch of sound, which is when you make something really, really high or really, really low. All right, and that actually changes those sound waves. So if we stretch out those waves, if we make those waves long, really, really long, then that sound is gonna be much lower. And if we make those sound waves really close together, really compressed in together, that sound is gonna go really, really high. Maybe try out at home making a really, really high sound and then a really, really low sound but make sure you only do it for a few seconds because it can get annoying. All right, uh, hey Ashley, did we have any suggestions by any chance of uh, ways that we could make noise with our ancient device over here? Emily wants you to rub a stick on it. Rub a stick on it, that's a great idea. I do have a tuning fork here, so Emily suggested that we rub a stick on it. So we've got our tuning fork and we'll go, Ooh, that makes a really cool sound. Very nice, very nice. Great suggestion, Emily. Do we have any others? Wendy wants you to use it with water. Use it with water. All right. So maybe we'll get our water right here and we'll try plunking it in the water. Ready? One, two, three, plunk. Mm, that kind of worked. All right, maybe this end. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, that did make a cool sound and got my jeans a little wet, but I think that's fine. It's all for science, right? <laughs> all right, do we have another one? Maybe one last one? Oh, Nathan wants you to helicopter it. Nathan wants me to helicopter it. All right, I'm going to take that as meaning swing it around the top of my head. Nathan, let me know if I'm doing this right. We're going to swing it around the top of my head and we get... Ooh, nice suggestion, Nathan. We've got a sound right there. We've got a sound coming out of this tube. So what's happening is we've actually got, we're using air pressure to pull some of this sound out of, or the air out of this tube here. It's pushing that, that air out of the tube and creating that sound. It's compressing those sound waves, those vibrations to create a sound. Now, what I want you to do in the chat is I want you to guess what might happen if I swing this faster and what might happen if I swing this slower. What do you think is going to happen to the sound? Make some predictions and we'll try it out. So ready? We're going to spin it at the normal speed and then we'll go faster and slower. All right, did anybody notice what happened to the pitch there? When we, uh, when we made that Karuba tube, as we call this item here, when we made it go faster, that pitch got higher. So those waves, those sound waves were compressed in together. 
when we swung it slower, that those sound waves were longer and more stretched out. So that sound was much lower. So that's our Karuba tube. I think our friends Brian and Cindy might have another demonstration for us so that we can see a little bit more about pitch and how we can change pitch. Let's see what Brian and Cindy have to offer. So you may have already heard that sound is vibrations and you're trying to source some interesting sounds at home. Well, all you need is a plastic straw and a pair of scissors. You want to flatten out the top so I take my chompers and I just flatten out the top like that, but I cut on the edges that I just made and you can see that we have now sourced a double reed instrument. We're going to call this the straw oboe. No, cut, cut, cut. That was the perfect take. Can't you hear how beautiful this is? No, you have to cut, cut, cut to change the sound that you're making. That got to be a higher pitch. That's right, because the frequency or the pitch of your note is actually directly related to the length of your tube. Whoa, if you end up making a straw oboe at home, share that on social media with the hashtag show us your science to let us know that this inspired you. Anyways, have a great day, folks. Bye. Awesome. Thanks, Brian and Cindy. I actually, while they were doing that, made a little straw oboe of my own, so I might test it out, see how well I can play the straw oboe, and I might require a little more practice on that one. Awesome. If you try out any of these demonstrations or experiments at home, make sure you post them on social media. Use the hashtag show us your science so that we can see what fun science things you're doing at home. So, We've talked with sound about how sound is vibrations, how you can stretch out those uh, sound waves and compress those sound waves to change the pitch. But now I think we're ready to change the volume. So when we get really, really loud or really, really quiet, we actually change those sound waves again. So instead of stretching them this way, we're actually going to stretch them this way. So as you get louder, those sound waves get taller. As you get quieter, those sound waves get shorter. And we have a special way of measuring how loud something is. So here at Science World, we have this device right here. This is called a decibel meter. So it's going to measure how loud something is. We measure sound in volume. We measure volume in decibels. Um, and this is going to show how many decibels that sound is. Now, decibels is actually a pretty cool measurement because it's what we call a logarithmic measurement. So that means that if you have something that's 10 decibels greater, then it's actually going to be 10 times louder. If you have something that's 20 decibels greater, it's going to be 100 times louder, right? So we're going to test out our decibel meter right here. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to get one of my colleagues who's just off stage to give us a nice loud uh, sound of some sort. We'll let them choose that sound. Um, and we're going to measure how loud it is on our decibel meter. So I'll need to give a silent countdown for this because I don't want to trigger the decibel meter. So maybe you all can help me count down in the chat as I hold up my fingers. Four. That was beautiful. We had a 79.6 decibel sound from our colleague over here. I think there's a way that you can actually test out decibels at home. Uh, if we pass it back over to Brian and Cindy, we can see just how that might work. Let's see it. 
Hi everyone, this is Cindy from Science World and today we're going to be taking a look or listen to some of the sounds around us in our neighborhoods. So I downloaded a free app that's allowing me to uh, measure the volume of my surroundings in decibels as well as visualize those sounds in a couple of different ways. It's almost 7 p.m. so what we're going to do is we're going to head outside and we are actually going to take a look at the sounds that people make during the 7 p.m. cheer that we have here in Vancouver every night to honor our healthcare and essential workers all over the world. If you're going to do this at home, I would encourage you to go out, measure the volume of your 7 p.m. cheer and share some of those results on social media with the hashtag show us your science. All right, have a great day, guys. Thanks so much for sharing that, Brian and Cindy. And we do want to uh, put out a special thank you to all of our healthcare workers, frontline workers, essential workers, for all of the amazing work that they do and continue to do uh, throughout our lives. So thank you so much for that. Now, we have talked about sound, we've talked about pitch, we've talked about volume, and I think our final demonstration is going to give us a very loud bang. Before we get to that final demonstration, I do want to thank you all for joining us for this Facebook live stream. We are going to be streaming every Wednesday at 2.20 for all sorts of your favorite Science World shows. Now, Science World in the Dome might be closed, but Science World as an orga organization is still hard at work. So, uh, with our main revenue source, pretty much depleted. We do uh, want to reach out to you all and thank you all for your continued interest in Science World. And if you can, please donate so that we can continue to ignite wonder and empower dreams tomorrow. All right, I think we're just about ready to have our big explosion. Now, with our big explosion, we are going to need to be extra safe. We're going to use this right here uh, and we've got a fire extinguisher right here we have some safety goggles which i am going to wear and we have the reminder that fire demonstrations should only be done by a trained adult all right so here i have a stick with some matches on it inside of this balloon way up there we have some hydrogen gas. Now, this gas is flammable, so when I put these matches towards the balloon, I want you to guess what might happen there. This is going to be very loud. We're going to make a very loud sound. We've actually got someone just off stage who's going to measure with our decibel meter, see how loud it is, but I am going to wear my ear protection to protect my ears. All right, now, in order to make this work, we have to light our flaming stick on fire. So I have my match here. We're going to light that stick. Wow, there's one match lit. And our second match is lit. And now I want you all to give us a countdown from five in the chat there so that we can see this balloon explode in five, four, three, Two, one! Whoa! That was a pretty great explosion! Make sure our fire is out there. Now, did we get a reading on how many decibels that was? 92. 92 decibels! That was much louder than Brian's beautiful operatic singing. Um, amazing. That was our final demonstration for the sound show today. But if you've got some time, maybe stick around. 
type out some questions in the chat. What do you want to know about sound? Type those out and we might be able to answer some of them. Thank you so much for joining us today. I had an awesome time. Remember that if you create any science experiments at home, use that hashtag show us your science and join us back here every Wednesday at 2.20 for another fun science show. Awesome. Ashley, do we have any questions over there? Oh, Shana says, wow, that was cool. Thank you so much, Shana. That means a lot. I think it's pretty cool, too. <laughs> Rachel says, happy new year. Rachel says, happy new year. Happy new year. Yeah, I feel like that balloon exploding is like a perfect happy new year extravaganza, but obviously done in a safe way. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. How loud can sound get? I know sound can get very loud. It can actually get louder than what our ears can register. So there is a certain point that sound uh, can start to hurt our ears and start to damage our ears. I can't quite remember what the decibel meter is. Do you know what the, the uh, decibel? 140 is around, 140 decibels is around the area that uh, sound can hurt our ears or we might not be able to hear that sound anymore. But it also depends on who you are. Some people are able to hear a wider range of sounds than others. Great question, thanks. Do we have any, any others? Oh, somebody says thank you, Auntie Kiki. Oh, somebody, somebody I know is watching. <laughs> How do you speak through a string? That's an awesome question. So when Brian and Cindy had those cups attached to the string, the string was actually vibrating. So the sound that was coming from Cindy's mouth into the cup, it was vibrating through the string. And those vibrations, they were very, very small. So they were very, very quiet. When they reached the cup on the other side, they got a lot bigger. So that's why you could hear them. So they got bigger, that means they got louder, so we on the other end could hear those vibrations. Great question. Oh, we had a question. Will the sound coming through the rope change depending on the tightness of the rope? This is actually a great question for you to try out at home. Why don't you try making one of these and see if the sound changes when you tighten that rope or when you have that looser. I think I have a couple predictions about what might happen, but try it out for yourself. See what happens. This is what bright science is all about, asking those questions and then testing them out. We've got one more question. What is your favorite sound? What is my favorite sound? Ooh, I think my favorite sound is the sound of, of gentle rain hitting the top of a tent as it trickles down. You know you're nice and safe and warm inside, but you can hear that rain. It's just perfection. Maybe in the chat you can all put down what your favorite sounds are, and we can see if anybody else likes the sound of rain on a tent. All right, thank you so much once again for joining us for this Facebook live stream sound show. I had a lot of fun. I hope you had fun too. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.